Awesome guys. Well, uh, in this segment, we're actually going to talk about uh, spiritual preparation and what that looks like uh, uh, for our context um, and possibly for your context as well. Um, so I know that at, uh, in our church services, what we like to do, it, it might be different to what you guys usually do um, before a church service starts uh, and in preparation for that. Um, uh, yeah, every, every church uh, have different uh, processes around that sort of thing. Yeah, um, I wish that I woke up at um, three hours before my call time and prayed for three hours. Um, <laughs> but if I'm being honest, I don't, hey. And, um, but let's explore maybe what that looks like for us practically. What are some of the ways still that we do prepare ourselves for that? Yeah. Um, and yeah, you're about to touch on what, maybe what we do here at our church. Yeah, so uh, for us, uh, usually our services, um, uh, we usually, uh, before going into them, we will have our rehearsals. As, as we do, we'll probably have rehearsals for uh, probably about an hour and a half, I'd say. Um, and obviously we were able to make time for everybody else to do their checks and what they need to do. But spiritually speaking, uh, we, I, I guess we all like to come together as a community. We all like to come together as, a, as, as one big team. And usually when we start rehearsals, uh, we'll, we'll come together and we'll actually pray during rehearsals and we'll commit that time to the Lord. Once we're done with rehearsals, we'll usually come off stage and we'll go up to our green room, uh, further upstairs backstage, and we'll all gather um, as an even larger team and we'll, and we'll pray that way. Uh, so usually um, one before rehearsal and then one up in the green room. Yeah, perfect. Mm. And there's a couple of purposes, obviously, for that, for us to kind of um, talk about any of the practicalities in this green room yeah. um, of things that we need to know, maybe if anything's changed between our rehearsal and our service. But certainly yeah. it's so that we can gather as our creative community together, yeah. even have a bit of fellowship before as a, as a community, but then as well to pray and make sure that we're dedicating the service to God. 100%. Now, I know I joked about not waking up maybe three hours before, but certainly, at least for myself, hopefully on the at least the car drive, that's something that I'm doing if I'm not uh, last minute learning some of the songs if, that, if that's needed to at least be praying or to be seeking God like what is your goal for uh, this service for today yeah. are you going to do something new and what might that be I know for myself often in the green room I'm praying this prayer God let me get out of the way if, if there's a time that we can do that mm. And this might be a difficult tension if we've spent a lot of time preparing. Maybe we know exactly what songs we're going to do and when we do them. And so where might the space for us to do something that God might be leading us to do in that moment? Can you kind of see maybe what that tension might be? Yeah. Um, how do you navigate that? I think uh, understanding um, that, you know, we're, you know, what we're doing it for, but also who we're doing it for. I mm -hmm. think just um, having the, the bigger picture in mind is really important. Um, and like you said, committing the day to the Lord, committing the service to the Lord. Uh, people that are coming, the congregation that, that, that are coming, some of them might be coming for the very first time and, and not really know where to start. Whereas that's a little bit different to us where we come in and we think, oh, we did this, you know, maybe last week or the week before. And it's second nature to us, but it's not second nature to them. So I think um, usually when, when we pray uh, for the service, some, one of the things that we do pray for is that God will specifically speak to people and specifically speak to individuals and that, yeah, we would get out of the way um, for God to do something awesome. And we just we just ask him to have his way in the service and literally just um, touch people's lives, speak to people. Uh, and I know for me, um, being able to um, enter into my own um, personal worship, whether that be before the service or, or even while I'm playing, I know that that opens a door. Um, for God to do things because it, it allows me to sort of not be distracted or too focused on other things, but allows uh, God to then go, cool, I'm going to use this, this and this. And you might not know it, but this person in the back or sitting somewhere in that service or watching on is going to be um, deeply impacted by this or spoken to by this. It, it could be anything you never know. So I think um, come prayed, coming prayed up and, 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 um, and aware of the bigger picture is really important. Yeah, it could just be that little hi-hat that you add in this, I believe, <laughs> that just changes everything. It could everything. be. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Exactly. Um, nah, beautiful. I love that we're talking about this um, and maybe even something in some drum master classes we don't spend uh, often maybe a lot of time on, but I'm glad we're doing it. And um, some things that I'd love us even to talk about, maybe uh, we've spoken in our preparation for this concept of head versus heart or head and heart. We um, maybe get a little bit carried away with who's watching us play. And mm -hmm. maybe even that might 
uh, determine the musical choices that we make. We're going to talk again a little bit more in our last section about less is more. Maybe we might think that this is our moment to show off some of our chops and mm. impress some people in the, con in the congregation or some people that are watching on. And so I'd love us to spend a bit of time kind of even talking about this. How do we make sure that our intentions are pure, especially for a drummer that might be the one that might receive a bit of accolade, that maybe might be the one that people are saying, oh, you're so good, or mm. we're aware of... Um, yeah, I guess our place in that. How do you, how do you kind of approach? I approach think that first thing? and foremost, understanding that your service in church is literally your service. And um, I know I'd speak to some of our players, and and um, they would they would attribute it to, you know, obviously you can play gigs here and there, you can you can play in a bunch of other settings, but um, playing drums in church is like using your gift in its highest form. Uh, because it's literally giving back to the one that gave you the gift in the first place. And I think um, having that perspective um, actually changes everything because it's less about, you know, climbing an invisible ladder or finding some kind of like hierarchy to the system or whatever. It's not about that. It's literally just bringing uh, your, your hands and the, the, the gift that you have and bringing it before the Lord and serving others with it. And it's literally as simple as that. And I think once you understand that, I think um, all that other stuff doesn't matter after a while. Um, sure, people could come up and just say, hey, like, great job. You've done, you know, good job for, in that service and things. And obviously you can say thank you. Obviously they've, they've taken the time to come up and say that to you. Um, but that's, that's not necessarily, you know, it's not what it should be about. Um, you know, I think keeping aware and making sure that your heart is in the right place. I think understanding literally, quite literally what you're doing and um, your, your service is, is, um, is an important thing to be aware about because as I said, it, it, it influences the way that you see things. Because if I was going to come into church and kind of, I guess, treat it like a gig, I would miss the point completely. Yeah. So I think that's something to be aware of. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, I love our creative pastors that we have here at our church. They're so uh, down to earth and real and happy to have these types of conversations. And I guess I would suggest to you as well, maybe you're watching this somewhere around the world and you can't reach out to us. But if um, if you feel like you're struggling with that, if you maybe feel like you need to have a conversation, I'd recommend chat to your um, creative pastor and say, hey, I feel like um, I'm. some of my thoughts are leaning towards um, receiving accolade or maybe to climb a ladder how do i deal with that for myself and maybe can you help me to kind of keep me in check mm. to make sure that my intentions are pure uh yeah i think that's cool some things that were that, that came to mind um was um this aspect of you know what is this session or what is this set going to create for my future it's it's again it's it's sort of allowing your mind to think about those things that just really don't apply um and one thing that one, uh, one of my uh, friends in America, um, was also a great drummer, mentioned to me, he, he brought up this point of um, um, uh, being inheritors um, of the kingdom and, and playing like it. You know, not, not playing like slaves, but playing like heirs to the Lord. Yeah. And that, appro that approach, I guess, it, it shifts your perspective so much because um, you play with such excitement that by the time you, you know, sit in a room and you play to, I don't know, 50 people, it's exactly the same as playing in a room to 22,000 people. Your, your vision and your understanding, your perspective of the situation, it, it doesn't change because you, you understand that you're not, you're, not, you're not peddling to get to a certain level. You're literally excited about bringing a gift because you know that you inherit the kingdom in the end of the day. Um, and I think that's quite a beautiful thing. Um, so keeping your, like, as we said, keeping your head and your heart in check uh, in, the, in those kind of ways, I think is, is really good. Yeah, beautiful. And um, another point that we kind of talked about in our discussions before was uh, coasting. Maybe if we feel like we've got this, I'm going to be careful with this word here, but smaller opportunity, maybe there's less people in our congregation and we might think, well, this isn't as, as important because I'm not playing too a large congregation or these mm. people don't even understand music. What's the point of me mm. um, putting in effort or trying? Uh, what would your approach be, I guess, to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, guess, I guess the same thing kind of applies really. It's, it's, um, it's bringing your service. It's bringing a gift before the Lord again. Um, 
<laughs> doesn't matter how many people are watching, you know, God's watching and God understands and God knows where your heart's at. Um, so I think, yeah, um, uh, another thing that my, my friend actually said, he said, um, if, you, if you coast, like you said, um, when you have the smaller opportunities, you're not actually going to be prepared when the bigger ones come because you know, you, your head might not be in the right place or you might not be ready to step through that door. So um, I think the approach to each, each setting is, is quite the same. Yeah, yeah, uh, very cool. Um, and that might be easier said than done as well. I guess we're kind of aware of that, um, given that we are playing, say, at, at Hillsong Church. And you might be thinking, well, that's easy for you to say because you play there. But um, I guess just know that we're being as earnest as we can when we mm. say that to um, wherever you're a part of whatever church and whatever your congregation looks like give your best to god because he deserves it he deserves your um your beautiful authentic genuine worship and um and that's certainly what's going to be the most important yeah awesome yeah very cool well we'll wrap up that session there and uh look forward to our next one where we get to talk a bit about the practicalities of drumming in a service in a worship uh context so see you there <laughs>